Hey guys, James here with Northwest HVAC in Spokane, Washington. Today we're going to be doing a manual pump down on an air conditioner. So this scenario is useful if you're upgrading the outdoor unit and you want to save some time and not have to recover the refrigerant or if you're doing any work on the line set or the metering device or the indoor coil. So it could be changing a filter dryer, a metering device, uh, swapping out the line set for whatever reason or maybe you need to cut out the coil uh, to clean it. Uh, so anything outside of the outdoor condensing unit can be worked on simply by pumping the refrigerant down into the outdoor unit. So with that understanding, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do here is pop off these caps with a wrench not with adjustable pliers. Anything that has flats on it like that, you want to use a wrench or you'll scuff up the, the flats. So this has flats, we're going to use a wrench and we want to pop off these two caps. These are your queen valve access so that you can close these valves. And as you can see here, we do have pressure on the gauges. It's a little easier to see the high side one than the low side one, but uh, you can see there's uh, just under 200 PSI on the gauges there. And we're going to start by closing the liquid line. So I have my handy dandy refrigeration service wrench that also works great for the manometer port plugs on the gas valves. So I keep one in with my manometer as well, but this little handy dandy stem here will save you from quarter turn on an Allen wrench over and over and over. So we'll pop this in here, close the liquid line down completely, and you want to shut that all the way. So we close this 100% closed. And then the suction line needs to be closed as well, but not all the way. We need to close it right after we get done pumping it down. So what I like to do is kind of close it most of the way down so that it'll close on me quicker when I'm ready. I'm done doing my pump down here. So let's go ahead and close this guy down almost all the way. So usually what I do is close it completely and then back it up a little bit. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay, that's all the way closed, so we're going to just crack it off so that I'm ready. When I get down to the zero, I can just quarter turn close it, right? So now the idea is we're going to run the compressor. The compressor is going to, it can't come out of here anymore because that valve is closed. So the compressor is going to suck everything through this suction line. It's going to pull it through the liquid line, through the metering device, through the indoor coil, then back through this suction line into the condensing unit here and nothing can come out because we closed that liquid line. So when we get all done with this, all the refrigerant will be locked inside the condensing unit and there won't be anything in these pipes or anything on the indoor uh, side of the system. Everything will be locked here to the outdoor unit. So if you keep an eye on these gauges, you'll see when I push in the contactor, it's actually gonna start sucking down uh, both sides of the system because your gauge access, and I mentioned this before in class, your gauge access on these Schrader valves is to these lines, not to the inside of the unit. So you'll actually see both gauges will drop down to zero. Um, I use my low side for my final detriment of if we're empty or not because it's more accurate. The high side is increments of like five, maybe ten, and then the low side has smaller increments. So I can actually see if it's just one PSI or if it's zero. And I try not to go into a vacuum because remember we're going to be 
replacing something on the low side, a filter dryer in the in the uh, in the liquid line, or the metering device or the indoor coil or something between these lines and the indoor unit. So since we have to cut open the system, we don't really want to run it into a vacuum because then we'll let air in, right? So we're going to stop at right around zero, just above zero PSI. And a little bit of refrigerant, yeah, we'll squirt out, but it falls under that EPA de minimis category. So we'll be okay with that. So let's go ahead and do it. We're ready. That's That liquid line's closed and the suction line's almost closed. And so now we got to operate the compressor and let it pull all the refrigerant out of these lines for us and then we'll close it down and lock it in that unit and then we'll be done. See the gauge is dropping down. Eventually we'll get down to zero. And by holding in the contactor physically, I'm bypassing any sort of pressure safeties that might be in series with it. If I tried to just do this off the call for cool, then when it got a certain low pressure, then the low pressure safety would kick in if it had one, and it would cut off my contactor. So by pushing it in manually, I'm bypassing any safeties that might be in series with it. And you don't hear much refrigerant hissing anymore. So we're almost down there. My low side's reading 15 PSI now. And once we hit zero, we're gonna close this off and let go of this contactor and make sure it got it all out and it stayed at zero. Okay, now, so if I could zoom in on these gauges here a little bit, you can see that the low side is just above zero. It migrated up a little bit. A couple PSI of gas isn't going to kill us. So we like to have that land right on zero, but you could clearly see both gauges are basically on zero. And for illustration purposes, I'm not actually going to open the system, so I think that's good enough that we can see now all the refrigerant has been pumped down into the condenser so and you guys saw how long that took just a minute or so if you're changing out a condensing unit and the compressor still runs maybe you're upgrading to something or you want to work on something from the line set in then you'll be able to open up the line and work on one of those things, metering device, uh, filter dryer change out maybe, or a indoor coil, you wanna pull it out, clean it, something like that. And as you can see, I do wanna point out something, so it's nice that this problem happened. I'm sure you're noticing as we're talking that low side gauge is migrating back up. If you look over here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you see that frost on the liquid line right there? Uh, it looks like it's just bright white, but that is frost on the liquid line. So what that tells you is that we didn't get all the refrigerant out of those lines. So what you're going to need to do is open that back up and allow the pressure to equalize, and you're going to need to suck it down even lower, which is uh, why I like to go down below uh, zero initially, but I make sure that before I open the system, I bring it back up to atmospheric pressure. Uh, either by adding a little bit of nitrogen in the line set or letting a little bit of that refrigerant burp back through uh, to bring my pressure up to zero. So this is a common mistake that people make on a pump down and I, I did that on purpose for illustration purposes. You can see the frost on that liquid line there which means there's still some refrigerant in there that didn't get sucked out into the condensing unit. So I'm going to come back to you guys in a minute after I 
get all this refrigerant out of these lines and we'll look at that line again and you won't see the gauges migrating up in pressure anymore like you're seeing right now see we're almost up to almost another 15 psi on the low side now so that means we're not empty we need to keep going okay so now you see I've pulled it down into a slight vacuum on the low side it's kinda hard to see through the camera but it is over here it is below zero um, and what you see now when I pan over here you see there's no more frost on that liquid line so that means we got all the refrigerant out of that line set and out of the low side of the system uh, the low side of the system and the liquid line and even after our gauges drifted up a little bit which wasn't much this time because we were truly empty this time it did stop below zero so before you go to do your work since we are below zero we're in a vacuum I know the EPA will kill me for my earlier statement the best bet here right now is to add some nitrogen to bring that back up to a positive pressure before you cut the line open but anything on the line set and the indoor unit including the metering device filter dryer either pipe the indoor coil any of that stuff now can be changed and it only took us a minute to pump everything down into the condenser and once you get done doing your job then all you have to do is pull a vacuum on the line set just as your gauges are hooked up right now just go get your vacuum pump pull it down to your 500 microns and then uh, disconnect your vacuum pump and open those pipes back up and you're done so you didn't have to take any charge out through a recovery machine and you shouldn't have to add any charge if you got it all out and then you increase the pressure with nitrogen rather than burping out some refrigerant uh, into the lines as I mentioned earlier so hang on a second here and uh, we'll crack it back open and you guys will see how it responds once we got the job done okay now so the job is done we made the repair changed our filter dryer TXV whatever it is we were doing that required this pump down maybe we put on a new outdoor unit or something we're all done we pulled our vacuum our gauges are closed and in the appropriate vacuum down to 500 microns and so we're ready to put it back online so all we need to do now is take that same refrigeration wrench that we used before and watching these gauges you'll see all we're going to do is just open up these lines and then we're done crack these lines back open pressure is going to start to come up and you'll want to open both sides completely 100 percent and then put your caps back on and your job is done write the invoice and get out of here Put these caps back on. All the way tight. Make sure you wrench them tight. Then we make sure we don't have any leaks.
and you're done. So there you have it. That is a manual pump down. So as you saw, it only takes a couple of minutes versus the 20 minutes it would probably take between getting out your equipment, hooking it up, running the recovery machine, actually sucking out all the refrigerant. Uh, you may be looking at even longer, half hour, hour maybe, depending on how big the system is. So having the option of pumping it down can save you precious time for your change outs, your repairs, or whatever it is you're trying to do. Hopefully this video is a little better than my last one. And hopefully you guys got some good information out of it. This is manual pump down. Thank you very much.